This episode is brought to you by Store974, Qatar's only true PC gaming store. Shop now at store974.com. Q-Tip time, everyone. It's me, Ahmed Amari, aka the Qatari guy, and I'm back here again with another episode of Q-Tips. Today, I'm going to be answering the question: What do I do in Doha if I'm only there for a couple of days? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So, Hamad International Airport gets at least 11 million passengers a year. Now, I'm not too confident in that number, but I think it's big enough for the airport. Tim, get the right number and put it on the screen. That's a lot of people that come through our airport. And if you have a transit ticket, and if you have a long layover, you are entitled to a free tour. Once you get to the airport, you go to the Visit Qatar counter or Qatar Tours counter, and if you have a transit ticket, they'll tell you how to reap the benefits of your business class travel ticket. Yeah, yeah. Let's say you've done the tour and you decided you want to stay around and do have for a couple more days because you like what you see. Well, let me share some landmarks that are a must. You can't come to Doha without seeing these things, or doing these things, or experiencing these experiences. Number one, the Museum of Islamic Art. Enough said! Number two, very close to the Museum of Islamic Art is Sug Wagaf, our first ever Sug. And it's called Sug Wagaf because it's the standing Sug, because before, like way back when, the harbor, people would just pull up, and they would stand and sell their things right then and there. Over the years, it's kind of went further and further and further away. Now there's a corniche and lights, and traffic lights, and things moved on, things developed. So Sugwagov has been re renovated, but it's keeping its old charm. So definitely go around there and just see what's on offer there. You can get spices, clothes, uh, weapons. Rosary beads. Check out that episode where we did the rosary beads. Remember when I was talking about the rosary beads? Another spot you should definitely visit is the Inland Sea. And depending on the time of year, if you're coming here between end of October, early April, it's going to be camping season. So you get to see a bunch of people bring in their own cars, souping them up to try and conquer the beast, which is the dune. An architectural wonder that it must be seen is the Grand State Mosque. It's a mosque, it's beautiful. Go check it out. Another thing which I believe is a must see is the Richard Serra Monument on the west coast of Qatar in Zikrit. Go check them out. Are you still here? Go! Now I'm not saying that that's the only thing that you should do in Doha. There's a lot more to do. There's, there's food, music, events, hospitality, but these are the landmarks. I think it's, you know, do what Tim did. Walk around, take your selfies. Yay, I was there. Looks pretty. Yay, wear a hat. I actually do wear a hat because of the sun and you're Caucasian like Tim. Oh, yeah. You're in for a challenge. That's it from me here today at Q-Tips. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And in all honesty, I haven't even visited all those places at once. But it's one of those things. When you're a tourist, you want to go and see everything. When you're a resident, you'll get around to it. Now it's time for comment of the week. And this week we have... See, this is what happens when you don't let me wear my glasses, Tim. From Akil Wahid. What's the song called at the end of your videos? Well, Akil, thank you for asking. Uh, it is by Handbook UK. His handle's in the... His handle's here. Put it up here for him, Tim. Okay, Let's put up his handle here on Instagram. And his SoundCloud account is in the description. Okay? Click on it. The man got vibes. He got tunes. He drops a beat like I drop. What do I drop? Dollars! Ha! So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about Qatari culture, ask them in the comment section below. Don't forget to click the bell. Click!